We're interested in using mussels uh, to determine how the coastal environment is changing. They're filter feeders, so they concentrate what's in the water. So they're a great thing to look at to see what's going on in the environment. Is it responding to a contaminant in the environment? Is it responding to environmental changes like uh, changing water temperatures or nutrient conditions? And we need some good baseline data from the lab to help us understand what we see in the field. I'm assisting Katrina with the Muscle Project. We are looking at three different exposures. They are nutrient levels, oil exposure, and temperature. First, in order to conduct this experiment, we had to collect mussels. So we collected mussels in the bay about a mile from the Sea Life Center. So we brought them back to the center and we waited for a time for them to purge and acclimate so that all of the mussels would be under the same conditions for these experiments. So in this tank we have our controls, so it's just seawater. In this tank we have one part per million of crude oil and this tank is 10 parts per million crude oil. And the reason why we chose those concentrations is that 10 parts per million has been measured in, in the ocean after an oil spill. So that's a realistic amount of oil that an animal might encounter. If there's an oil spill, we can sample mussels and we can see you know, what they're responding to, because sometimes it's hard to actually see the oil in the environment, especially at really low concentrations. But we can see a signature in the mussels themselves, so we can monitor the the ecosystem for recovery. We waited certain time periods for them to be in the exposures, whether it nutrient deprivation or excess or the different amounts of oil. And then we dissected them. We were looking for the hemolymph, the gills, the posterior abductor muscle, the digestive glands. And we're looking at these to do biomarker assays. So these biomarker assays will help us determine these different levels of stress on the muscle and determine their impact on the bay muscle's biological processes. We start out all the, the dissections doing what's called morphometrics. So we measure the length, width, height, and weight of the mussel. So then the next thing we do is once all the seawater's out, we basically take a, a little tuberculin needle and stick it into the posterior ductor muscle. And then we withdraw the hemolymph, which is essentially their blood. Uh, one of those samples will be used for heat shock protein analysis and that responds to general stress but also thermal stress. So um, if you know water conditions are becoming warmer, you can see if they have a, a stress response or a heat shock response to that. But uh, it's also useful to know how that uh, is going to respond you know, if they're in a starvation condition, so if they experience that stress, how does it vary compared to if they're being stressed by a temperature? And so by looking at these different factors, when we go out into looking at these factors in the lab where everything's controlled, so they're only experiencing, say, a, a change in temperature condition, it'll help us understand when we go out into the field what they might be responding to. So what does it look like uh, if they respond to a change in temperature uh, versus a change in nutrients versus a contaminant like oil. Our bigger goal for uh, this work is to have a tool that we can use in these coastal ecosystems and see how the mussels are responding to their environment, which will tell us about uh, how that environment might be changing.